Hi there, my name's Travis Just. I'm here to cover what you need to know to start your RV rental business. If you're watching this, I know we've got your attention. You're intrigued by this RV rental industry, but here's what you really got to understand. This isn't just a COVID trend. This is a real lucrative business model. What's cool is often there's no money down to get started, but there's immediate cash flow. Are you kidding me? This is huge. You will learn just how big the RV industry is and if renting RVs is right for you. We'll also introduce you to the different types of RVs, what to buy and when to buy. Today, RVs are more popular than ever before, especially since the pandemic. Record sales in 2020 and 2021, there are more RV owners in the United States than ever before, hands down. The RV and camper van rental industry is at an all-time high of $356.2 million in 2022. Jeff Cavins, co-founder and CEO of Outdoorsy, said his company grew by 4,600% from April to October of 2021. Since 2018, RV share has grown 10 times its size, mainly due to the RV boom in 2020 and the ongoing shift in perspective around RV travel. But nonetheless, it's growing like crazy. Outdoorsy and RV share are the two giants in peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. They are absolutely dominating the field. Many RV owners, including my wife and I, rent RVs on both platforms. There's 35 million people looking to rent an RV each and every year. But here's the problem. There's only 100,000 commercial RVs available to rent. But check this out. 17 million RVs in North America sit unused for an average of 344 days each year. We have this massive opportunity here in front of us to fill the demand of 35 million people looking to rent an RV. Now you can make enough just to mitigate your RV expenses or you can make more than you ever imagined possible if you see what's happening. That's why right now is the time for existing RV owners to turn their greatest liability into a huge asset and gain another source of income. This could be a spare time income, a part-time income, or for some of you could even become a full-time income if you really take this serious. There's also 9.6 million households looking to buy an RV within the next five years. But here's the thing, it's hard for these people to justify that big expense with so little leisure time throughout the year for them and their families. So if you're one of those 9.6 million people that want to use an RV for leisure renting, now you certainly can justify your purchase. So let's bring on the side hustle. Here's your chance to take advantage of the booming short-term rental industry without having to jump through all the hoops of buying property, renovating the property, furnishing the property, and even being in this super competitive market because there's way more than enough to go around for everyone in this RV rental space. So... Do you want a piece of the pie? By now, you're hopefully starting to realize just how big this industry is becoming and how an RV can be one of your greatest assets because that pie to me is looking real good. Step number one, great idea to get an RV if you don't already have one. Now I say get because buying isn't your only option. Listen, you can offer to consign someone else's RV, which means you do all the legwork of renting their RV and then you both split the profits. Now, this is an entirely separate topic that we'll cover in a master class down the road, not to mention a huge way to scale your business when the time comes if you choose. Now, if you're set on buying or owning your RV, let's start with a little introduction to the different types of RVs. RVs are separated in two main categories, motorized and towables. Motorized are motor homes that don't require another vehicle to drive them down the road. They're broken into three different classes. We've got class A, class B, and class C. Now that describes their shape and size. Towables are RV trailers that require a tow vehicle to pull it to the destination. There are two main travel classes, the bumper pull trailer and the fifth wheel trailer. The first type of motorized RV is the class A. This would be your basic box on wheels, the shape that probably comes to mind when you think of a motorhome. This is actually what my wife and I own and we love it. The class B, it's a van conversion which starts its life in one form or another as just a plain old van. The Class C is also a box on wheels, but has the nose of a full-size van or a pickup truck. The fifth wheel connects to a tow vehicle with a kingpin hitch in the bed of the truck. The travel trailers are pulled with a bumper hitch behind a tow vehicle. You can tow these with a truck or even a smaller mid-size SUV, depending on the size of the trailer. Now that you have a basic understanding of the different types of RVs, if you don't already own one, 
The question is, what kind of RV should you buy? Here's a few key factors to take into consideration when picking out the right RV for you. The first key when deciding on the perfect fit for you to rent out is to learn what type of people are interested in what type of RV. Being compact and easy to drive, the Class B motorhome seems to be the pick of the litter for couples and especially millennials. More than half of the millennial travelers reported they would RV camp in style at a music event or festival. Couples had the greatest interest in renting an RV in 2020. In fact, about 73% of them say they're likely to rent an RV again in the future. Class C's are the most popular for families of four looking to take a road trip. Class C's are easy to drive even with no experience RVing. Class C's are also popular due to the extra over the cab area that gives a total of three separate sleeping areas in a relatively small RV. Class A's are the largest drivable RV and offer the most sleeping space, making it super popular choice for families to come together for unique experiences. Class A's are the most expensive per night. However, multiple families can share in on the cost, making it affordable for everyone. Now, why are people renting? Today's travelers are staying in an RV for so many reasons. They're NFL tailgating, motorsport events, rodeos, music festivals, local events, camping experiences at state and national parks, on the road for tripping in style or comfort. They've also come in handy when displacement occurs during and after a natural disaster. We're also seeing a try before you buy trend. In fact, 44% of RV share customers reported that being a potential buyer was their reason for renting in the first place. Now, the next factor to consider is where do you want people to take your RV? Are there popular destinations within driving distance? What kind of places will determine what type of RV you should consider? Here are some of the top destinations in the United States for RVers. If you live out west, many of your renters will want to take an RV to the national parks. Class B and C's will be most appropriate here. In Orlando, families are here for amusement with what Disney World has to offer. You'll find a lot of Class A's and you'll find a lot of travel trailers set up here. Here's a list of the top metro areas to give you even a better idea of which cities see the most RV rentals. The southern and western states seem to be the most popular. However, you'll find rentals in every single state throughout the United States, so don't let where you live stop you from getting started. There's plenty of people looking to rent in every single state. The last thing you'll want to consider when choosing the right RV is how easy is it to maintain and if you personally know how to operate it well. Now, no matter what RV you get, there's always going to be a learning curve to the ins and outs of how it operates. But if you're new to RVs, I highly suggest starting with the travel trailer. There's less mechanically to worry about. However, you do need a tow vehicle such as a truck. Now, if you're more experienced and knowledgeable with RVs and how they operate, it'll be an easy transition to try out a motorhome. The rental value is way higher than with a towable, which means way more money for you. However, if you don't get familiar with the manual, you're going to spend more money than necessary in repairs and maintenance. I can tell you from experience, that is so true. Now, Class C's are the number one pick. These small RVs are the most ideal for beginners. They sleep several people and can go pretty much anywhere. And the rental value is very lucrative. RV price ranges from twenty-five to three hundred thousand plus dollars and above. It's fairly easy to secure financing for newer RVs. The best part about buying new or a newer RV is that they often offer five, ten, fifteen, even twenty-year mortgage options. And here's the cool part: depending on your credit and income, you may be able to make a purchase with very little to even no money down. That's big. Others may need 10 to 20% of the RV's value to put as a down payment, but nonetheless, you got your asset. So here's some tips on buying. Let someone else take the depreciation hit. Since RVs generally depreciate, you can save quite a bit of money purchasing a model that's already been used. Now, this doesn't mean you have to drive around in a rust bucket clunker. You'd be surprised what kind of discounts, though, you can find on models that are only a few years old. Here's what you need to know about depreciation. As soon as you drive this RV off the lot, it takes a 20% hit in depreciation. After one year, it takes another 20% hit in depreciation. Listen, we purchased our Class A brand spanking new. Amazing. We love it. However, the second one is the exact same make, model, year, color, you name it. But because it was a year and a half old, we got a 20% discount and it only had 1,600 miles on it. 
Can you say, score? There was no way we could pass up on the chance at having an identical RV that had already taken the huge hit in depreciation and it already smelt brand new. If you find something that works, why would you change it? Every three months starting in the second year, expect a 1% hit in depreciation. And if that isn't enough, at year 10, it takes another hit of 20%. Now there is a sweet spot when it comes to how old the RV is that you're looking to buy. And that sweet spot is three years old. For one, it's already taken two massive hits in depreciation. And for two, well, majority of the kinks have been worked out and the miles are still relatively low. In fact, 21 days is the average amount of days a family uses their RV in just a year. So if you buy a three-year-old RV, it's like you're getting an RV with an average of only 63 days of use. Think about that. It's practically brand new, but you got it at over a 40% discount. Also, don't be afraid to look beyond the dealership. Start looking at places like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Let Go, RV Trader. There's so many apps out there with local great connections. And keep in mind, just like a car, if you buy it from a private owner, you'll normally get a better price. Just know this, banks do not tend to finance RVs older than 10 years, but if you're paying cash, you can really find some great deals, especially if you expand that search a handful of states away. <laughs> One of our coaches, we bought nah, a little more than a few states away. We flew all the way into California and we drove 3,300 miles back to Florida and we just looked at it as a chance to give it a trial run before we started renting it out. Another great idea to get your hands on an RV is to consider a partnership with someone. Each of you puts in half of the upfront cost to buy the vehicle. You can schedule separate usage times for family vacations, but you split all the income that's coming in from rentals. Why wouldn't you? Now it's time to make your move. If you're ready to take the next steps in your RV rental business, click on the link below.